Welcome to Everything Co-op, bringing you information on how cooperatives can help improve your quality of life. This show is being sponsored by the National Co-op Bank, NCB. The NCB is dedicated to strengthening communities nationwide for the delivery of banking and financial services for the nation's cooperatives, their members, and other socially responsible organizations. For more information on the power of community ownership, visit ncb.coop. That's ncb.coop. Now stay tuned for your host, Vernon Oaks. Good morning, everybody. This is Vernon Oaks. A welcome to Everything Cooperative. It's the day after we had this great snow here. And this morning, we have Mariana Swayikoski. Good morning, Mariana. Good morning, Vernon. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Very well. I'm in Helsinki, in Finland, in Scandinavia. It's snowing, but still we have plus two degrees only. So not so cold today. So, so, so how many inches of snow do you have there? At the moment, I'd say not inches, but centimeters, maybe 10, 10 to 20 centimeters here in Helsinki region, but in Lapland, around 80 centimeters to one meter in Lapland, up in north, where Santa Claus lives. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I've been practicing your, your, your last name, Swarikoski. Swarikoski, yes. It is difficult, I know. Okay. But so, you will manage. So you will manage. You can call Mariana. So, it may be easier. Yeah, Mariana is. So what time is it there? Uh, it's 20, no, it's half past four in the afternoon at the moment. So it's 4.30 in the afternoon. Yes, 4.30, yes. So six hours difference. Okay. Yes. Probably normally five hours, but with our daylight savings, it makes it six hours difference. So in Finland, thank you so very much, at least... You're not the only other side of the world where it'd be early in the morning. So the population of Finland is five and a half million people? Yes, correct. Okay. Relatively. Only, only. We are a small country, yes. Okay. Now, I think our president was wondering why people from Finland don't come here, or he was inviting Finland to come to the U.S. But we don't get many Finland people coming to the U.S., is my understanding. Actually, I, I don't know the... The figures, but very well known in Finland as a holiday resort. I'm sure many Finns have visited also the lakeside countries where they might have uh, okay. relatives who moved from Finland to the States in in late uh, in early 19th century. Okay. So we're talking about co-ops. This is everything co-op. So what co-op do you work for? Uh, I work for a consumer co-op, actually a group of consumer co-ops. We have 20 regional consumer co-ops, which we are calling S-Group. So you have 20 regional co-ops. They're consumer cooperatives. Yes, they are consumer cooperatives covering the whole Finland. So 20 altogether. So they are regional, quite big regional co-ops in their own, own regions. And, and we are the market, at the moment, we are the market leader in closing business. Yes, we are, are having also department stores, restaurants, hotels, hardware, hardware, hardware trade. And we also do have a bank of our own. You have restaurants. Hotels. Hotels. Department stores, high markets, of course, supermarkets. We are in the grocery business. We have supermarkets, hypermarkets, discount stores. And then we also do have service stations where, where we sell fuel and, and restaurant business in, in the same building as well. So we have quite many services to offer for our members. Um, how big is this? This is all of these. I also saw you have um, car dealers. Who, who? Yes, we do have. We also do have car dealers. 
in some of our regional co-ops. Yes, that's correct. Okay, that's a lot of different businesses. Is there anything you're yes. not in? <laughs> yes, there are some. Okay. We don't have any hospitals or 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 such. We are not in in health health business. So I got grocery stores, consumer doables, service stations, hotels, restaurants, agriculture supplies, car sales. Yes. And it's called. And we are quite, we are quite lucky to have about eighty percent of Finnish households as members. So you had correct. You you said you mentioned that Finland has five point five million inhabitants, and we do have. 2.2 or 2.3 million households as members, and that that is altogether 80 percent, 80 percent of Finnish households as members. So we are quite lucky to have a very very wide customer base in our members. So if you have 80 percent of the households. And if yes. that's 80% of the population, that would be like 4.4 million people. Uh, that's approximately yeah. 3.8 million people as customers if if, it, if you count all the members of the family who are doing purchasing. Of course, families might have children under, let's say, 10 years, 7 years, mm-hmm. who are not doing any purchases by themselves. So that's why we say that we have approximately uh, 3.8 million cards, membership cards, which are also a bank card in our in our system. Okay, this got started in uh, 1904. Yes, yes. How did it get started? Actually, it it, it it started a bit earlier, in in late eight, let's say 18. 95, 98, we had already at that time some very few, but some very small local co-ops. And that's the way how it started. And during that time, quite many Finns had moved from countryside to the cities, and they were working in factories. And of course, when they had the origin in, in a farm, they knew what is a good food like. What does it taste if a potato is a good potato? How does it taste? How does it taste if the milk is okay? And when the milk is not mixed with water, for example, during that time, there was a story that the private retailers, they added water to the milk. So the milk was not a good quality. And the price was high. The quality was bad. The price was high. So those active people, they formed a co-op in order to get proper food. And that's how it started. They formed very small local groups of people, co-ops, small co-ops, in order to get proper food. And that's how it started And in 1904. As you mentioned, these small local co-ops, they formed SOK as a purchasing company for Mm -hmm. them in order to get quality food with reasonable prices. That's how it started. And still still today, we are telling the same story. Our grocery stores want to sell proper food, very good quality food, at a reasonable price for our members. Well, that's one of the, the things about co-ops is that the whole idea is to provide quality products by banding together, um, having quality products at competitive, if not lower prices than on the other, the other, what the other folks, non-cooperatives may be selling. The prices have to be reasonable and fulfilling the quality of those products in order to be a good choice for members. And the competition is high, so it's not so easy to be in everyday business, in grocery business, for example. The competition in Finland is as as 
tough as it is in Europe or I'm, I'm sure in, in the States as well. So how long have you been in this business? I have been working with this S group since 1983. I started as a young student. I just graduated from the university and took part to a training program which our group has had for young professionals. And since I have learned a lot, and it has been a really inspiring experience to get to know the cooperatives, to get to know the idea behind the business. Because, of course, we are in the business. This is not charity. We are in the business. And, and I always say that, of course, we have to make profit. Mm-hmm. But the mm-hmm. amount of profit is always reasonable. And we use the profit we are making in order to develop better services, better benefits for our members. All right. So you've been there 35 years this yes. year. Yes, 35. correct. Yes, I'm so old. Yeah. Oh, you, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but it has been a very interesting experience, as I told. And, of course, I have had the privilege to, to have many jobs during this period, many different jobs in in different parts of our group. So I'm very happy for that. Well, we're going to have to take our first break, but when we come back, I also notice you're mainly in Finland, but you're also, you do business in Russia. And yes, yes, we do in, in St. Petersburg. Yes. So we'll, we'll come back and talk about the different places you do business and the different products that you have, but we'll be right back. Please don't touch that down. Welcome back, everybody. This is Vernon Oaks. The program is Everything Cooperative, and we have Mariana Swajkowski from Finland with the S Group, 22 different businesses form up their cooperative, 20 regional ones in the S Group. All types of different businesses, grocery stores, consumer durables, service stations, hotels, restaurants, agricultural supplies, and car sales started in 1895. A few people got together in agricultural business to create better products at reasonable price, better quality products. Mariana, you, I got you really love coming to work. Yes. Yes, I enjoy. Why? Every day is a different one. Every day is a different one. And we all can feel that our job has a meaning in, in, in that sense that we can provide benefits for people, for members, every day in all our more than 1,600 locations, outlets we are having. So we feel that we are quite happy to be important for so many things in their everyday life. So you have 20 different regional cooperatives, 1,600 outlets. Yes, well, that's... yes, all over Finland, yes. So you're also in Estonia and Russia. How is it working in those countries? Yes, we are in Estonia. At the moment, we are having there one hotel and Prisma hypermarket and restaurants. And in in Estonia, we are not a cooperative in Estonia. So the businesses are owned by SOK and and all these 20 regional co-ops in Finland, they own SOK. And SOK has its own business in, in Estonia, serving okay. Estonians in, in Prisma Hypermarket and restaurants and, and one hotel there. And Russia? And it's growing and developing very, very well. Okay. And what about in Russia? Uh, in Russia, we are only in St. Petersburg, and there we are having three hotels. In, in that sense, it's quite interesting that we can offer our members in Finland also the possibility to travel abroad, for example, to Estonia or to St. Petersburg and have a holiday there in, in their own hotel. In 2011, 
United Nations declared 2012 as the year of cooperatives. And so I had the pleasure of going to the United Nations, and I was amazed that there were co-ops in Russia and China and well, all over Africa, Latin America, just co-ops all over. So are you a co-op in Russia with those uh, hotels? or are you just, uh, the, No, the, no. Okay. It's, it's not a co-op in Russia. It, it's not a co-op in our case. It's not a co-op in Russia, in St. Petersburg. So, the business is owned by SOK. So SOK is the main owner of, or the main group for these 20 different regional co-ops. They all come together under SOK's umbrella. Is yes, that, SOK is an umbrella, and, and these regional co-ops, they do own SOK. So SOK is a second-level cooperative. Okay. And then SOK, which is owned by these regional co-ops, then go out and purchase restaurants or supermarkets or whatever in other countries. Yes, yes. Okay. It's, it's a sub diary of SOK who is doing the business there. Now, who is doing the business? I didn't understand you. Uh, it's a sub diary of SOK. Okay. A, a business owned by SOK. Okay. In, in in Estonia and in St. Petersburg. Okay, so you own a bank. Yes, yes, that's right. How did it's, that work? Uh, as we say, it's a it's a bank of it's a re, it's a bank, and every our co-op member has a bank account in our bank, and we have a loyalty program for our co-op members, and we pay bonuses every month and bonuses money back from their purchases. So we have a system, a loyalty program system, that you are doing purchasing a ma- in one month in our shops, in our outlets, restaurants, hotels, so supermarkets, hypermarkets. And then we count all those purchases you have, you and your family have made in our stores. And also, we do have partners in this program. And partners means companies which are not owned by SOK or they are not owned by a regional co-op. And you can do purchasing in our partners, and we calculate all your household purchases among in one month altogether. And we pay bonuses, money back, maximum 5% of your purchases. So we pay you money from your purchases and the money is paid into your bank account. And that means that our bonus, the money you receive from us, you can use that money wherever you want, whenever you want. That's not points. And we we don't say to you that you have to use these points in our shops only. You are you feel free to use the money however, whenever you want. So, Mariana, you have a bank, and so if I go into the grocery store and I buy my food for the week or the month, then I get dividends in my account at the bank. Yes, yes, that's correct. Every month you get dividends from your purchases. And you can use the dividend money whenever you want. And so the same thing if I go to your to the service station or if I buy my seed at the agriculture stores or if I go buy my car, everything that I buy has some form of a dividend and that gets placed into my bank account on a monthly basis. Yes, but unfortunately, if you buy a car, that's something for which you don't get bonus. Okay. Of course, it's out of the system if you buy a car. Okay, but okay, the car's out, but everything else. Hotel. If I stay in a hotel. Yes, if you stay in a hotel and have a meal at, at the restaurant, buy something from our department store, cosmetics, whatever, and food and petrol for your car. And so also. And you... then if you have an insurance in in a mutual insurance company called Lahi Tapiola, which is also our partner you will get bonus also from the insurance you have in, in that mutual company. So the insurance company is not a co-op, it's not a 
part of uh, it, it is it is it is a co-op it's it's a mutual company okay it's a mutual but not a own not a part of s group or is it a part of s group no no it's not a part of s group it's just it's a, a partner. partner okay yeah it's a partner and so yes, you get dividends on that we don't own it we don't own it no so you're, you're really talking about the third principle of cooperative, and that is member economic participation. You, yes, you participate yes. by buying products and services. You may, do, do you have a membership fee to join? Uh, yes, we do have a membership fee, which you pay only once as you become a member of a regional co-op. And the membership fee is 100 euros. Okay. 100 euros to join, and then you get dividends on a monthly basis depending on what you purchase. That's awesome. Yes. Now, we're going to take yes. our second break. <laughs> we're, <I'll>, <laughs> I'm really okay. I'm enjoying the conversation, and we'll be, we'll be right back. Please, uh, everybody, don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Talk more from Mariana from Finland about the S Group and the 20, 20 different uh, cooperatives, regional cooperatives. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. This is Vernon Oaks. Thank you so much for staying tuned in. We're talking to Mariana Swayskowski from Finland, who called in this morning. Uh, they have, she said, between ten and twenty inches uh, centimeters of snow, and that's between four and eight inches of snow. But she said, further north in the North Pole, where Santa Claus is, there's eighty centimeters, which is about thirty-one inches, two point six feet of snow. It's, but your your temperature right now is thirty two degrees, so you're right at freezing. It's just about the same. Well, we, we're going to get up to forty four today. We were thirty five, thirty six yesterday, so our temperature is about the same yesterday as what you guys are experiencing. But you have a lot more snow than we get. You get a lot more snow. Yes, but I I had a chance to be in New York last year in in March, and. It was a huge snow storm, you could say, in New York. And it was really interesting to see how the Big Apple City survived the snow. Yes. The schools were closed and people didn't go to work. UN building was closed. I was attending a seminar there. The building was closed. So everything stopped after the snowfall. And Helsinki, y'all just keep moving, huh? You just keep going. Yes, yes, we are keeping moving all the time. <laughs> Where I grew up in West Virginia, uh, they never closed for snow days. Now they closed. It was eight inches. I was there last week or two weeks ago, and it was eight inches of snow. They closed the schools. And I remember walking, which seemed like five feet of snow. At least it was beyond my knees, and we just had to walk to school, and that was it. Uh, so, no, yeah. it's, it's changed a lot different here than what it used to be. But you guys, you just keep on moving. So just to s summarize so far, you've got 20 regional co-ops. There are 5.5 million people in Finland. And you have 80% of the households are members of your co-op. And you sell a lot of different things, groceries and gas and hotels and restaurants supplies, agricultural supplies. Um, and what we were talking about before the break was member economic participation. And we were talking about the bank, such that everybody every month gets a dividend based on what they what they purchase. And that's, you said, a max of 5%. And I think I read somewhere between 1% and 5% of their purchases they get back, not including the cars. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to talk to you about your loyalty card. How does that work? Uh, our loyalty card is that is a membership card to your regional co-op, and it's also a bank card into S Bank, the bank of our own. And you show your loyalty card every time you do shopping in our shops. And because our loyalty card is also a bank card with Visa, the international Visa. So you can you can pay your purchases by our loyalty card, or of course 
you also have a chance to pay it by visa if you want. But all the all the shoppings you are doing in our outlet, whether it's a restaurant or a hotel or a supermarket, every time you use your card and we calculate all your purchases all together during that month. And when I say we calculate your purchases, I mean we calculate the household purchases, your household purchases in a month. And based to that amount of purchases you have done by our partners, we pay you dividend money back into your bank account. It would be really interesting if the National Co-op Bank, which is the cooperative bank here that uh, co-ops belong to and are members of, if they could maybe work with NCBA, National Cooperative Business Alliance, uh, here in the U.S. to create a own visa card, and that every time somebody spent money in one of the co-ops that belong to NCBA, then they would get a dividend. I, that would be neat to bring, yes. to really yeah. bring the cooperative business model up to where people can see it's a lot more business happening in cooperatives in the U.S. than people know because most people just don't know. It's not hmm, not thought of as much. Yeah, yeah. But, but in order to be profitable, first of all, of course, your services and the products you are selling in your outlet, they have to be those products the members want to buy. Sure. First of all, your business has to be in a good shape, in, in that type of shape that your members want to buy there. Otherwise, you lose the business. First of all, the business has to be in a good shape, competitive. Mm-hmm. With your, Absolutely. With your other other competitors and the prices has to be on a reasonable level as well compared to the quality and i, f- I find that, food. that and so that you ha- you give those dividends then you will be very successful well i know that with food co-ops here in the u.s mainly you get the same things you have better quality lower price you have more organic and it's things that the community want in places like ace hardware or true value even nationwide mutual insurance. The businesses that you have, we have here in the U.S., but they're not combined under an umbrella. Yeah. Our own. Yeah. And so that's the only umbrella I know is the NCBA, National Cooperative Business Alliance. Man, yeah. That's great. Now, do Mondragon Spain has their own bank, and they also have a, a university. Do you all get into the education part, which is the fifth principle? No, no, we don't. In a yes and no, we do have an institute for our own employees. Okay. So we do educate our own staff, our own our own employees in our own institute. But we don't provide any education for the core members, for example. It's an inside institute, if you can say so. Mm-hmm. In, and by inside, I mean that it's serving only our own staff. But we do have 40,000 employees. How many, th- how many thousand? 40,000. 40, 40,000 40, employees in, in our regional co-op. So that is a reasonable base <laughs> for, for education. Well, 40,000 know, employees. For students. <laughs> Yes, 40,000 students. Yeah, 40,000 yes, so. students is a huge university. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. So uh, what is your institute called? It's called YOLAS Institute. It's just the name. No co-op, no cooperative. Okay. Co-op or cooperative is a difficult word for us because we don't understand it. Also, in, in a Finnish language, cooperative it's called Otus Kunta. So that's why the names are difficult for you. Okay. And that's also the reason why we don't use the co-op logo. We use it only in, in an email address of our English websites. But normally we don't use co-op logo. 
because of this language difference. Now, do you, you use the principles, the, the values and the principles of the cooperative, the modern cooperative? You mean in, in, in which principles? Which one? Well, volunteer and open membership is the first one. Yes, of course. Of course, it, the membership is open okay. in Dem our regional court, yes. Democratic member control, one member, one vote? Yes, one member, one vote. We've already talked about yes. member economic participation, which is the third one. We've talked about that. Yes. Num number four is autonomy and independence. Percent of assets owned by outside investors. Uh, yes, our regional corps, they are autonomous and independent. Okay. I, I cannot tell you the percentage of the assets owned by outside investors, but uh, that is true that some of our shops, those buildings where we are having shops or restaurants or hotels, those buildings are owned by outside companies, outside investors. Okay. We don't own necessarily all the all the buildings where we are having shops or hotels or restaurants. So it just it it just means that 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 you're self help organizations, you're controlled by your members, not by yes. government entities nor any other organization that are if, if you had to raise money, then they still don't come and take over. No external sources tell you no. how to operate. Yes, we are independent and very well off in a good shape, so to say. Okay. We are making, as a, as a S group, we are making profit every year. And the amount of profit is almost the same amount which we are paying as dividends to our members. That's interesting that you paid a dividend first. A lot of a lot of co-ops in the U.S. will pay their dividends once a year, like at the end of the year, when they know how much profit they have. Then they decide yes. how much will stay in the business for growth, how much will go to community um, sort of philanthropy kinds of things to help the community and how much will be in the dividends. And you have in your structure, you pay the dividends automatically. If they're going to yes, be paid every month. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. what I was thinking. Yes. Month. And in in the year 2016, for example, S Group, the, all those 20 regional co-ops, they made profit altogether 290 million euros as a profit. And add to that, we paid bonuses to our members. 394 million euros. So the profit was 290 million euros and the bonus is nearly 400 million euros. So in a way you could count those two figures all together. Nearly 3 million euros and 4 million euros. That's 7 million euros all together. So we are really profitable group of cooperatives. And uh, you mentioned this, uh, this, that some cooperatives are paying dividends afterwards. We also, some of our regional corps, they use the same system. They pay bonus every month, as I have told you. But if the profit will be reasonable or high, too high, they have a system that they might decide that this year they pay also return of surplus, as we say it. So we they pay bonuses every month, and into that they return some amount of the surplus to their members. They have the both, both ways of giving benefits and mm. advantages to the members. Wow. So you can get a bonus. You can get monthly dividends based on your your purchases, and you can get a bonus based on the amount of profit and what the board. Now, what's the structure of the board? I saw 35-member parliament. The, the structure is so that we have the board of directors, of course, and then then we have a supervisory board, and then we have the council of members. And the core members, they do elect one vote, one member. They do elect members to the council, and then the council elects the supervisory board. 
and then the supervisory board elects the board of directors. Okay, and then that board is the one that decides how much of the profit goes back to the members. Yes, yes, and the, the supervisory board, yes, correct. Okay, this is fascinating. Uh, I really wish we had something like this in the U.S. between what happens in Mondragon, Spain, and in Finland. Um, do you have a sense of the cooperatives in Finland? There was a study done here by the University of Wisconsin that tried to look at what percentage of our GDP, our our, our total gross national product did co-ops have? And it was a small number. Do you have any sense of, of all of the products and services that are sold in Finland, how much the cooperative sector provides? Actually, I don't have the figures, but uh, but I could tell you that you may have heard a saying that Finland is the most cooperative country in the world. If If you take into account that we are a small country. We're going to, we're going to, take, we're going to take our final break, and we'll be right back to talk more about this. Uh, we'll be right back. Please don't touch the dial, everybody. Welcome back, everybody. This is Vernon Oaks. The program is Everything Cooperative. This program is brought to you by the National Cooperative Bank. The National Co-op Bank is bringing you this program to give you information about cooperatives and the benefits of cooperatives. And we have on the line with us today, Ms. Mariana Schwarikoski, who is in Finland, and the group is the S Group of 20 different regional co-ops. And w- before we took the break, I was asking you if you had any sense of how much of the gross national product does the cooperatives uh, bring in Finland? And you were saying that Finland is the most cooperative country in the world. There's more cooperation going there than anywhere else in the world. Is that correct? Did I get that right? Yes, and now I have the answer for you. You asked about the amount of cooperatives out of the GDP, and it's nearly 25% of wow. Finnish. GDP comes from cooperatives. Twenty-five percent of the nearly, GDP. Nearly, from... nearly twenty-five. Nearly twenty-five percent of of the GDP of Finland comes from the cooperatives. Wow. We have approximately five thousand cooperatives in Finland. If uh, if we, if I count all the cooperatives. I mean, I mean, service cooperatives, producer cooperatives, and consumer cooperatives all together, and virtual. And and every team has nearly two memberships in a cooperative. So we have approximately seven million memberships in cooperatives in Finland. And if you remember that we had that 5.5 million mem- inhabitants in Finland. And those 5.5 million inhabitants have more than 7 million membership in co-ops. So that means that me, for, for example, I I have a bank account in a cooperative bank. I have a so I'm a, I'm a member of a cooperative bank. I'm also a member of of a regional co-op consumer co-op, and then my insurances are in a mutual company cooperative insurance company. So I have three memberships. Mariana, when I looked at health, the health system in Finland, you were ranked number 31 out of 190. Um, and I couldn't even find where the U.S. was ranked. I needed to look and study a little bit more. But do you have any sense of the, the seventh principle is concern for community? One of the values of cooperative is caring for was its honesty, openness, social responsibility, and caring for others. Do you have any sense that there's such a large number of co-ops and people belong to co-ops, you belong to three, 
um, yes. that this is what maybe helps the folks to really care for the community, like providing health services or education or having policies and procedures in the country that really care for each other? Yes, and, and in our case, we have a program, a responsibility program called The Best Place to Live. And in, in that program, we have stated actions. What S group, our regional corps, what they are doing for the society, for the region of those consumer co-ops. And, and those acts are quite simple. They, they might be actions for the good of the society. They might be actions which have uh, causes for climate change or, or for well-being and health for our members and for the community. And or they can, have, they can be actions where we are trying to be better and how we are trying, training our our suppliers, I mean, a cooperative ethic, how we are helping our suppliers to do more sustainable business. So, for example, concerning human rights or ethical operations or methods. So you have it woven into the business, the cooperative business, to to the best place to live. Yes. Okay. So I, I, it sounds like, and this is what I believe, with 25% of the GDP being cooperatives and with the values of and, and principles of cooperatives, that there would be a better society, that it seems that like it would work. And it's interesting, it's Finland, <laughs> okay, way up north. Yes, <laughs> okay. May, yes maybe. And, and if you, if you, I don't know if you heard the news last week, Finland was number one country where where the inhabitants are the most happier one in the world. So we are on the way on the right track. No, 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 Marian. How can you be happy and it's so cold up there? How can you be happy? <laughs> the sun is shining. Um, it's a matter of clothing, of course. All right. It, it, the weather doesn't make you happy one way or the other. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Now. This is Women's History Month, and I see that you are vice chairman of the Alliance Gender Equality Committee. What is that, Alliance Gender Equality Committee? Yes, this is one of the ICA committees which, which aim is to build a better world for women. And for in, in this case, it's gender equality. It's not only women equality. So the aim is, is of course, to promote the cooperative business model and to promote the possibilities for, uh, for both of the genders, for men and women, to, to have a decent job, decent salary, decent working conditions. And to my mind, this gender equality message is, is of course, it's a common message. You can... If you are a listed company, you, you can also say that, yes, we are for the gender equality. But uh, I find that in our case, as a cooperative, we should be more strict on, on, on all those principles, in all our cooperative principles, and especially, of course, for the equality as well. So you, you said that still in, we still in Finland we do have a lot to do in in this matter. Uh, otherwise, uh, one example is that uh, Finland was the number one country who gave women both the right to vote and the right to stand for elections in a parliament, and the year was 1906. So women in Finland are quite lucky to have. A very good position, but still we do have a lot to do in in this sense. So, nineteen oh six, the right to vote for women in Finland. Yes, number one in the world, and also the right to stand for elections for the parliament. 
Now, do you have any sense of why that happened so so early in Finland? Because it was much later. I don't know the date in the U.S., but it was much later before women could vote in the U.S. Uh, yes, we have. Uh, I, I, don't know, I don't know the actual reason or, or the starting point, but, but we also had the, the cooperative law in Finland 1901. So quite in the early states, in the 19th century, Finns were very keen on building good relations, good, good conditions. So, so we are a small country. We are not so rich country. So, it's it's cooperation. So, the reason that the possible reason that Finland was number one for women, the right to vote and the right to stand for parliament, to be elected in parliament in 1906. A possible reason is because of the 1901 cooperative law. Uh, that may not be the reason for for these rights for it, for these human rights, but it's it's only one example that in the early years of 19th century, Finns were really active in building the society and the conditions in the society. And both women and men were active in in building that society up. You know... Um, but it's, it's an interesting question you, you mentioned. Yeah, it, it's... it's the, the more I study co-ops and talk to people like you that just feeds me information, the more I like co-ops or love co-ops uh, for families. And when you mentioned ICA, the International Cooperative Alliance, when Dame Pauline Green, who uh, was the president there, I think the first woman president too, she had said that co-ops help people to come out of poverty with dignity. And I say that over and over again because I like it, and that's ICA. And as a member of ICA, you said one of the committees is this the Alliance Gender Equality Committee. So this committee is working on gender equality, both men and women. Okay. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. And, of course, this gender equality is a very important question and important theme, especially in, in different parts of the world. Things are not so well if I think, for example, the situation of women in a family or in working life or in the schools. So we still have a lot to do in different countries concerning the gender equality. We're almost out of time, and I thank you so very much. Mariana thank calling in from Finland. I would love to talk to you some more. I have, it seems like, a thousand more questions to ask you, and the more we talk, the more I have. It's been wonderful and refreshing to talk to you about a country that has 25% of their GDP in cooperatives. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. Uh, we'll be back next Thursday. And live this week cooperatively. Build up your communities. Thank you very much. Thank you.